Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here on Watchbox Reviews. I'd really appreciate it and then I could deliver my best to your inbox on a daily basis. If you like our watches, you can buy them on thewatchbox.com. That's where all of our pre-owned vintage and late model luxury time pieces live full time with high res images, boxes, papers and accessory as applicable and of course full pricing details for all of the watches offered on thewatchbox.com. The watch on my wrist is the Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch Dark Side of the Moon Black Black. That's a mouthful. This is a watch that debuted as part of the third wave of the of the Moon watch series. The first was the Dark Side in 2013. The next year came the Gray Side, and in 2015, the floodgates opened with five separate variants, of which this one was undoubtedly the most stark and striking. It's the same case size, composed of ceramic with ceramic bezel and ceramic dial, but my goodness is this watch a poignant reminder that even Omega has a little bit of hublot in it. I jest. The bottom line is that the watch is wearable, technically sophisticated, and mechanically accomplished in ways that are usable and wearable as ceramic is very light on the wrist and the fit will agree with even a smaller wrist. My 16 centimeter circumference wrist has no issues wearing the 44.25 millimeter case. That's 9 to 3 not including crown or chronograph pushers. It is a fairly thick watch however as the combination of the box section sapphire, the thick caliber 9300 chronograph coaxial and the domed sapphire on the case back all add up to a 16.5 millimeter thickness with a cantilevered tachymeter bezel. It's not going to fit underneath a dress cuff, but it might be alright with a suit jacket, a sport jacket, or a dress jacket sleeve. It, now you'll find it is a very wearable watch lug to lug. 49.5 millimeters. I always say that if your wrist is smaller for a guy, so I define that as about 14 centimeters to 16 and a half centimeters for a smaller male wrist, you want to stay under 50 millimeters lug to lug. At 49.5, this watch does that. If you wish to accessorize, the lug spacing is 21 millimeters, and it'll take any standard 21 millimeter width strap. The strap that's fitted with the watch is, first of all, thematically consistent, as it is all black. It is a textile on the top with a monotone stitch and a folded edge dramatically bolstered so it matches the swell of the lugs. On the underside is where you find the calfskin, so it is a leather strap with a contrasting red stitch on the underside only, blacked out on the top to maintain the aesthetic. You can see it features a hybrid metal and ceramic clasp with twin trigger release so it won't pop open by accident. The clasp body is ceramized titanium and you'll note it has a minderless system that tucks any excess length underneath the clasp so there are no minder loops on the strap and when the watch is buckled down there is no spare strap or excess strap visible. It simply tucks underneath. You'll also note that there is a sewn in set of gussets to prevent gouging of the strap itself for long wearing durability. This has the potential, if you don't really soak it down or sweat like a pig, to be a half decade strap in, in terms of durability. It also has a little bit of a curvature to its spring bars, so it's fairly unconstrained in its movement. There's a little bit of flare, but you'll note that you can basically pull it straight down around the tight curve of a small wrist. Though the watch is monotone, that is not to say it is entirely monotonous. The flank of the case is satin finished and the lugs are beautifully polished. It is a testament to the industrial prowess of the Swatch Group that Omega is able to get polish this narrowly constrained with character lines this sharp on ceramic. That has to be achieved with diamond tipped tools. Let's see if we can get a little bit closer because the tachymeter bezel and the dial are special and they deserve your attention. They deserve my focus quite literally my focus. As you can see, the bezel is a satin finished ceramic. What you can't quite see is that all of the wells featuring indices and numerals as well as the script tachymeter are filled with black lacquer. So the attention to detail factor is high with this one. Of course you can use the tachymeter in conjunction with the chronograph to gauge the speed of an object over two fixed points a known distance apart like a standing kilometer or a mile. You'll also note that the dial itself features a matte black ceramic base. So it too is zirconium oxide to 
match the rest of the componentry. It's a beautifully assembled dial. As you can see, the indices are applied. They are black and white gold to match the blackened hands at center. There's a little bit of a dished profile to the somewhat raised sub-registers. There's a mono counter for chronograph minutes and hours at 3 o'clock, constant seconds at 9 o'clock, and a date window. Yes, a date window at 6 o'clock, also in black with black on black printing. This is a little bit of a oddball watch for a guy who's got a sense of humor about his high horology. This isn't for the guy who never cracks a smile. This isn't for the guy who can't occasionally laugh at himself. But if that sounds like a good time to you, this might be your watch. Now it does have loom and there will be a loom shot, so stay tuned for that. When you turn the watch over, you can see it's the semi-asymmetrical profile that we've known since late 1965 on Speedmasters. They provide a little bit of guard against the shearing of the pushers and the crown. That's what the, that's what the overlapping shoulders provide, shearing protection. Turn the watch over. We can get real close now. Caliber 9300, automatic winding, 60 hour power reserve, twin mainspring barrels in series, 54 joules. It is a COSC certified Swiss chronometer. You can see part of the dark side of the moon family, generously inscribed on the case back, protected via push down crown and screwed in case back to 50 meters. It's not a true aquatic speedmaster in that sense. Surface exposure only, full balance bridge with a free sprung index for shock resistance. And then you'll note underneath the skeletonized bridge, there is a column wheel apparatus for cycling the functions of the chronograph. It gives a crisp tactile response. Not only do you have the shock resistance of the free sprung balance and the full balance bridge, but you have an SI-14 silicon anti-magnetic hairspring thrown in as part of the bargain. A very resistant watch. Beautiful finishing in Cote de Genève with an arabesque spiral, blackened screws rather than blued or polished, and in addition to the column wheel, there is a vertical clutch system. So you'll note that there's not a whole lot going on on the dial if the chronograph isn't running. So if you don't like sub-seconds and you just want to leave your chronograph running, after all, legibility is at a premium with this watch, you can leave the chronograph engaged without additional wear tear to the movement thanks to the vertical clutch architecture of the chronograph mechanism. You can also see that thanks to the vertical clutch, there's no jump or stagger when you start the chronograph. It is a COSC certified Swiss chronometer and thus very accurate, but it's also a coaxial chronometer, meaning it features the latest tri-level coaxial technology, effectively a tan Tangential contact multi-axis escape wheel system invented by the late independent watchmaking master George Daniels. It was first serialized by Omega on a trial basis in 1999. And as of 2018, I can say that all of the original promise in terms of long-term stability, short-term precision, and reduced maintenance requirements has been realized. These are now both accurate and very tough calibers. A wonderful piece of independent horology heritage in a mainstream product. This is a timepiece that is designed for the guy who's able to crack a smile. That's the best way I can describe it. It's fun, it's a little bit silly, it's beautifully made and impeccably detailed. So if you want a no compromise fun watch, this might be right up your alley. Check out the dark side and make it yours on our website. Okay, we're back with the dark side of the moon, black, black. As you can see, or perhaps not see, it is loomed but just barely. Black Luminova doesn't give you much to work with. Now I should have mentioned during the meat of the video that it does have a time zone feature that allows you to independently adjust the hour hand while the watch continues to run, as well as a hacking or stop seconds feature for synchronizing. Now that you know that, turn the lights on and see it by the light of day on our website, thewatchbox.com.